Hey friends, welcome back to Actual Play. This is uh, Traveler Moons of Leviathan, where Judd and I just sail through every sci-fi trope and genre expectation that we can think of. Uh, it's been pretty freaking awesome. I'm excited to do more of it. Um, I'm Sean. I use he him pronouns. You can find me everywhere at Sean Nittner. As usual, uh, proceeds from the channel are split between the Trans uh, Legal Defense and Education Fund and Black Lives Matter. So if you give us monies, that's where they'll go. Um, we've had, you know, a pretty steady influx of people hitting that sub sub button and they get to give, uh, you know, a hundred bucks or so every so often to, to both of those organizations. And that feels good. Nice. So, yeah, I'm happy. It's happened. Twitch basically like doesn't give you any money until you have at least a hundred dollars. So like, and that's happened like three, four times now. So, you know, feel like 200 bucks each organization. Feel pretty good for our little, our little right. tiny panel. Um, it's been good. Anyway, a, less, a, a lesser a lesser streamer might somehow reference Critical Role's uh, recently uh, unveiled uh, Twitch money, but I would not do that because whatever. Yes, yes, yes. I do not want to compare ourselves to Critical Role's no. Twitch money no, or no. to the Critical no. Role Foundation and no. the nonprofit. Uh, no, not even yeah. close. A hundred dollars yeah. a couple times a year. That sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, if, exactly. if, if our gaming gets to do that, fantastic. That's right, awesome. right. Like it's like we're, we're playing the game that we enjoy doing. Right. And I would enjoy it online, offline, in person you know, whatever, and that it can also, yeah, make some money for a good cause. Yeah. I, I, I need to, like, it's funny because would we be playing this anyway uh, is, like, a question, like, maybe, very possibly. Um, But there is, like, a tension that putting it out adds to it that is palpable in a good way and I feel like keeps us, I don't know, it keeps us coming back at somehow. I don't know. It's a weird thing, but I I, I want to so I want a, a sociologist who's much smarter than me. To, oh yeah, to study I know. This shit. I think I am. I think games that we stream, like I don't think the money has to do with it. I think it's for me yeah. at least. It's a social expectation. Games that yeah. we stream are much more reliable than games we don't stream because we know yeah. that there's an audience, even if the audience is two people. Right. <laughs> um. I'm saying that because I, th I feel like I, we got we'll have a couple friends in chat right now. Um, even if the audience is tiny, it's 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 like like yeah, we said we we're going to do this, so yeah. now we we have to you know yep. live up to that. So. Yep, yep. And and like having it go onto YouTube uh, and and be archived is a cool thing. I I dig that. Uh, and yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, um, it's definitely very much more reliable except for my Thursday night group who is just the most reliable group of uh ragtag gamers that I've ever met and nice That's the, the, group, the group kept the group kept growing and I I was not setting up like not setting boundaries well because I just adored everyone who's coming in and uh then you wake up one day and you're running a a, a, a weekly game with six people and you're like this is a disaster well <laughs> uh how did I let this happen? Hey, Sword Queen. Nice to see you. Hey, Jimmy. And uh, yeah. And anyway, uh, but it's great. Uh, they and when when I looked up and realized we had six people in the group, I was like, oh, they're never going to all come to like, the same game. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't matter. And then they all show up every game, and I'm like, well, here we are. We gotta, we gotta. And people are really good about like raising their hands when they want to talk and not talking over each other. So it's good. Anyway, oh, that, shout, that is shout out. Shout out to the Thursday night crew uh, who show up every week. Uh, even though it's not a streamed game, it's it's awesome and gaming is fun. Uh, and I made a t-shirt about them. I was so happy with it. So, <laughs> yes, Judd's Judd's uh, Judd's um, cool cool t-shirt library is is worth is worth checking out. There are some um, there are some good nerdy uh, bits. Um, there's some good, come on, did I not get that correct? There we go. There's some good nerdy uh, art that he's made and put on t-shirts. I realized I need a, uh, I'll put the, the, the link right to the, the shop if you want. Uh, I've got one, I've, you know, the, there's the, there's the uh, shirt kind of, I don't know if it's a shirt meme or a sh shirt style where it's just people's names and then the ampersand. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I've got one for Willow. And then after watching it the other night, I realized I need to do one for A Knight's Tale um, because that's a classic schlocky fantasy movie. That, yes. Uh, uh, I've also, watched A Knight's Tale yeah. many times. Oh, yeah. Jonaki had never seen it. Jonaki had never seen it. And I, I, I felt like a terrible spouse. I, we, we sat and watched it. And every time the mu one of the music things came on, she was, she would look at me and say, what is happening? And I'm like, <laughs> this is the most realistic medieval movie ever made. That's what's happening. Like, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is history. Um, I, I, yeah. Uh, it's, it's the most, what is it? Like the most anti-diegetic thing you can imagine. It's oh, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's the farthest from the, what we're hearing being the same thing they're hearing and yet they interact with it. Yeah. It's, it's great. I yeah. Love it. No, it, yeah. I, I, ye I, old Nirvana, right? Like, <laughs> right. It's funny. Now I kind of want, now that Bardcore is a thing, um, I kind of want, someone to go to like re-edit the movie with the bardcore versions of all of their songs just to oh, see if yeah. it works um because i think that would be really interesting but uh yeah i feel and and i love how the movie just throws you in head first it's just like medieval people folks stomping out uh to, to queen yeah stomping out we will rock you and yeah and like they just are like this is what you're getting into do not overthink this uh it's just, <laughs> it's just stop uh i love it love it love it love yeah. it um yeah i'm trying to think of what the rpg equivalent of a knight's tale is like what's just i is mean it, is, is it, it riffs is it like i i well, like if you were gonna play that or is it um is it uh is it sword lesbians like is it, that the i feel like specifically the anachronistic parts of it to me, it would be Primetime Adventures, right? Like the Primetime Adventures is the show, is the game where you'd be like, cool, we're having a joust and what's playing in the background is We Will Rock You. And everyone's like, yeah, fan mail. That's great. I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In terms of playing the characters, yeah. Um, uh, do we have a toxic, do we have a toxic, uh, pervasive toxic society? Absolutely, right? Yeah. That's there. Do we have a small enclave of people that uh, push back against that toxic society? Yes. Our main characters, even if they're not always great to each other, uh, certainly give each other a little bit of a safe haven from, from that toxic world. So, yeah. uh, and we have someone who is sort of dipping in and out of like trying to live in both worlds. Uh, I think we have that as well. Um, in the form of, uh, what is her name? Joanna? What's Jocelyn? Uh, Jocelyn. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, sword queen. I will share that hip hop bardcore, uh, list, the YouTube list with you on, on Twitter before the night is done, maybe at our first break. Um, because it's really good. I, and, uh, I, I feel like I, I wouldn't have noticed this, but a good friend of mine, I, I was, we were, I was sharing it. And, and just saying how great it was. And a friend of mine pointed out that West Coast hip hop is particularly good because it tends to be more melodic. And, and uh, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I just, um, even songs I don't know that well uh, are, are great and it's fantastic. Um, so, so good. Oh man, Night's Tale, good Lord. Okay, so if someone if someone just wants to go and make those five characters and I mean not only is that is that the shirt right right William, Roland, Watt Jeffrey and Kate but also uh, uh, if someone I would put wants Jocelyn to make in there I would put Jocelyn says, in there PSL playbooks I'm here for yeah. it yeah yeah and, it, and it's a really fun villain like it's a really fun classist villain um, who's just awful. Uh, if I was writing, if I was, if I was a, uh, if I was, you know, a media studies person, I would definitely have to write something about how uh, jousting without armor on is a great metaphor for how marginalized folks have to find success. Um, anyway, it's a cool, it's a cool schlocky movie that was perfect for passing some time this week when we, while we were figuring out what to watch, what to, what to stream and. 
uh, yeah, it's it's one of the good ones, definitely. And it makes me like ache to miss Heath Ledger. Like it just is like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, he was he was too young. Absolutely. Yeah, thirsty sore. That yeah yeah yeah. That'd be so good. <laughs> oh uh, my goodness. Uh, oh, that's great. Thirsty Sword Lesbians Playbooks. So good. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and the, the fight, the last Dune trailer has come out and, uh, anyway, it just is on my mind because, um, one, I'm rereading it, uh, because, uh, the way my life is arranged right now, I have this weird hour in an, in a, in a, another, in an office where I have nothing I can really do. Um, and so I end up reading, uh, Dune during that hour once uh -huh. a week and, uh, and it's coming out on October twenty second, so I'm, I'm excited. You're, you're uh, pumped for that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I will have my my good TV timing for the, the RPG arm. from Aphidius to release the RPG. No doubt. I mean, that's. I'm sure it was going to do well no matter what, but yeah, what a spike it'll get when the when the uh, when the movie. Yeah, of drops. course. Yeah. Uh, nice. So let's do this. Let's play this game. Let's go travel amongst the moons of Leviathan. Yeah. I'm up for that. Let me. I've got my notes up. I've got that up. Um, I've got also that up. And I think I need to get to roll 20, which I often forget. Yeah, same. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Uh, None of my dice are on the table. What, what is happening here? <laughs> How do I do a thing? How do I do things? Um, well, I can, I can put it up for us so that we have uh, oh, that. There we go. So we've got it there. Uh, so I remember, last thing I remember was yeah. I had come back, uh, Alexi had, I had come back to the current timeline. And um, as my sister, who was now in the current timeline alive, was trying to tell me what had happened since I gave her the warning uh, uh, that, 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 saved, that kept her from going into battle and kept her from dying, um, it was just too much. And I sort of got overwhelmed and I had a seizure. And then when I uh, sort of regained my awareness, uh, we were being pulled into Leviathan. And Alexi Tertiary, i.e. me, but me change from the time I visited myself mm -hmm. uh, was there as well. And I was trying to get his help to, uh, to, to get us out of the Leviathan. And I, I, I failed many roles and, um, and uh, he was dubious about what would happen to Lido, who was somebody I didn't know who he was. And I, I told him I didn't know who Lito was, and that was enough to make him say no, he wouldn't help me. And then I just started getting this feeling like the two of us being present, me being in this timeline was actually, I had this suspicion that I was the, the thing that the Leviathan was trying to pull in more than the ship. Oh, and interesting. Yep. So I, and again, this is like really Sean's supposition slash Alexi's supposition, not you know, you said, well, this is what's going on. Or, yeah. you know, this is just sort of me making assumptions here and which is fine. I was happy to make the decision based on, uh, uh on what I thought was happening. And cool. so I, I sort of let go of the timeline and then I came to on a thicker station sometime in the future, probably where the yeah. station had been adrift in Leviathan for a while. Yeah. And uh, I think last I left, I just recharged the true sword and I was get, getting some idea about how you could possibly save the station when the very ship of my own dreams uh, docked and uh, Leto and his entourage got off and he introduced himself, I believe as king of the, of the orbit of the orbital. Yeah. Muster. Yeah. 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 Uh, anything I missed? Does that sound right? Oh yeah, King King Leto, chosen of the Leviathan, uh, ruler of the orbits. Uh, nice. Uh, docked his weird 
kind of uh, squid ship that that you know entangles itself around Ithaca Station, and and didn't fly in on these engines, but clearly has engines attached to it that could move the station. And and that I think I, I think that's from something you said. We were like, couldn't we make a ship that attaches to the Ithaca Station and then like thrusts it out? I think that that thing you said i think you said that to someone in some timeline somewhere yes and uh and and so it became a reality and here it is dot you know clinging to this station that's that's going through the the upper you know stratosphere of a uh or whatever the layers of sphere are uh for a gas giant yeah i'm sure that that's a thing i, I read a little bit about gas giants just like like really like you know online encyclopedia type stuff and and right. uh well, what i one thing i know is that the exterior parts of them tend to be filled with lots of uh particulates that, yeah. that like like meteors and asteroids and whatnot that are still stuck in the gravity well yeah but they spin around and they collect stuff so one of the things i was also thinking after we got off the call was that escaping that escaping that outer area that's still within the gas giant is going to be very perilous because there's going to be all kinds of shit flying around out there yep. that you could smack into that could, you know, just obliterate at the station. And Absolutely. the fact that it didn't get obliterated on the way in is probably, a, you know, something of a miracle. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, th I think, um, I think Alexei is pretty stunned at the moment, um, but he the the inst the one instinct I think that's going to I don't know I don't want to say quite save him, but the one instinct that I think he's going to rely on is to drop to his knee uh, as a sign of fealty to a noble, right? Like he has been in the presence of the duke; he's never been in the presence of a king, right? But it, and maybe his etiquette will not be perfect. But his um, the dropping to a knee and lowering his head so that they're not making eye contact is um, one a, a sign of, of of respect, but also two, just like a moment for Alexi to try and figure out like what the heck's going on. Because I think what I figured out before I let go was that Leto was Alec Alexi Tertiary's son. And this is presumably either my son 20 years in the future or maybe my great, 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 great grandchild. Who knows? Right. Just because he has the name Leto doesn't mean it's like, I don't know how far in the future this is, if it's 20 years or 200 years. Or, yeah. Or if he's, or if that's just even a coincidence. But um, yeah, so I, I dropped my knee and I, and I, um, and I, and I, you know, show sort of the signs of fealty waiting for him to you know tell me to you know to stand or 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 monologue further if he wants to it's just yeah um but i think he probably may or may not notice that i have the true sword on my side which yep. i think you said he had on his side as well yes we keep um, running into the one true sword multiple times yeah 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 and i love that that i mean the fact that uh, um, the fact that it's called a true sword is kind of funny now. Like that was a name I came up with for another campaign in a different thing entirely. So it's funny that, I, and I didn't think time travel was going to be a vital part of this game. Like that is not where I was going at all when we started. Um, so. Uh, here we are uh um with, with two true swords uh and and the idea of truth being messed with uh yeah. well in the last session we we sort of locked blades alexi yeah. tertiary and alexi prime locked yeah. locked blades with each of us with the true sword so it's yeah. it, it's um yeah 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 and i i like i like that idea that you said that you know we don't know how many generations this is um that's a cool idea and i think i i thought this leto was your son 
but I think he's like your great grandson. I, I I like that idea that it's it's down a ways and we get some distance from yeah. from everybody. Um, so let's just like say that his name was Leto the second, and he was named after your son, and uh, which I like, and is also a nice little hat tip to Dune, uh, the the book series there, and. Yeah, I think he, when you, you bend to one knee and he says, uh, you know, grandfather. And I think he's like a similar age to you. Um, I think he has a little less wear and tear. Uh, but uh, I think that's because you're in the middle of this weird time shenanigan thing. And, and yeah, uh, I've, I've gotten pretty messed it, up by this. It's, it, it's, it's, it's taken its toll. Um, and so he, he puts his hand on your shoulder and says, you know, uh, you know, grandfather, please get up. There's no, there's no need for this. And I'm not sure we have the time for it. Is your sword charged? Um, I, yeah. So I, I stand and I look at him and it's just like, it's just, I think it's still like, it's not that I can't fathom. I could fathom 10,000 years in the future where a Dyson sphere was wrapped around the, the life but I can't fathom this. Like there's yeah, just yeah. a part of this that's like, that I, I falter for a moment and then I and then I think when he says it's your sword charge, it helps sort of me like snap to it. I say, oh yes, yes, I've I've spoken with the AI uh theorizing a ship that you've just docked. Uh theorizing the existence of a uh, of such a ship at, that I can only imagine you are bringing now to recover our homestead. Is that is that real? And like he almost can't believe that like he was just talking about this. Well, maybe in the far future we could admit, we could develop something like this, right? And uh, and I say my the 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 sword was unable to communicate outside of the gravity well, so it has not been updated. I don't know when we are when this is. I think. We're almost 200 years uh, after the time when you were born. And how much do you know of my displace, my spillage, my, my displacement? Because it, it seems like he's like, knows who I am, not just yeah. like, what is, you know, like. I know quite a bit. My, my sister is the, uh, is the Reverend Mother of the of the engineering nuns? Hmm. Well, perhaps you shouldn't tell me too much. But how can I help you? We need to. Every moment Ithaca Station spends in this environment is a greater yeah. chance that it could be destroyed. Yeah, he 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 has his sword in the in the charging bay, and uh, he says, "My." Uh, my my crew is getting the ship is, is preparing to get us out of here uh and he he reaches into his uh into his you know tunic uh that that's over his you know astronaut mm -hmm. gear yeah it's his like void, bulky. His void, his void armor. yeah yeah it's like bulky and vaguely medieval and uh he he offers you a pill and he says this will cement you here temporally for at least a while uh the part of your brain that holds you in place in time has been damaged because of your uh psychic missteps early on in your in your travels I, I would like it if my sister explained to you exactly what's going on. She knows the math better than I do, but it, I think traveling again could be very dangerous for you. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I think Alexi, I, I, I very willingly take this pill. Uh, that, that sounds great. Um, but I do have, I have no reservations about that, but I do have reservations about him charging the sword. Because right. I assume that his sword is not charged because Ithaca Station has been lost for, for hundreds of years, right? Right, right. Um, 
And so before he charges it, I sort of put my hand over his and I say, be careful. I'm, I'm glad for your, I'm glad for, 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 I'm glad for the blade that you wield to be restored. But it is also what caused, it was communing with the AI that caused this in the first place. Be, be very careful about the, um, the libraries that you access. I don't want you to share my fate. He nods. And yeah, and I, I, I take that pill. Cool. Like, like, you know, someone who's really like in a bad way when they take a pill without anything to drink, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's how, that's how movies always tell us like this person's on the edge is when they just, <laughs> they're even it. worse when they chew them. If someone chews a pill that is uh, it's clearly not meant to be a chewable. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, folks. Um, in the chat, we we we've got uh, engineering nuns have been in this game since the very start. Yeah, and uh, I I like it. I was trying to play off the Benny Jesuits, but make them a little bit less written by someone vaguely terrified of women. Uh, not that Frank Herbert was terrified of women, but there, there's a vibe there that I don't know. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, and I love Dune. I. I will probably have uh, one of the museum replicas of the Atreides knives on my wall before before December comes. But uh, um, I don't know. There's things about the the book upon rereading it that, especially about gender, uh, that that vex me a little. Um, so anyway, engineering nuns. Uh, without putting anything down, uh, engineering nuns rock and yeah. and uh, cool psychic powers rock. And here we are. Uh, yeah, I think he, he charges the sword up and, uh, says that the safest place for us to do this is probably the, uh, is probably the bridge of the traveler. Do you want to, do you want to come aboard with me? Um. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, uh, and I think that, um, I think that Alexi from sister Theana, who was the one who told Alexi, you know, this would be 200 years ago. She was the one who, um, who was talking to, to, to him about getting the, um, getting the, the, uh, uh, the ship into a more stable orbit. I think that there's probably um, texts in the engineering cathedral yeah. that might be worthwhile uh, if he doesn't already have them. Like if these were lost when Ithaca Station was lost, then it may be um, that they're useful. So I say, I say, I, I love a. I love that the ship is called the Traveler. It's wonderful. But I say, um, be, before we return, um, you might, you may find that, uh, your, your final calculations, it may be worth double checking them against someone who's, who, who speculated this, speculated this solution, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, and, and those are in the cathedral, um, this is Theana's work, um, is there so I, I sort of going to encourage him to go like almost on like a, a very short pilgrimage you know like let's let's go to the cathedral and check out the engineering nuns work before we cool we do this yeah um, um yeah i mean i think our our you know the last time we were in that cathedral she was literally showing you uh you know these she was in a dark room uh, uh you know a dark vaulted ceiling room that and, and and showing uh alexi the the orbits that she had calculated that that the station yeah. would have to be on yeah it was it was i think she had sort of a planetarium design you know going up so we could see all of the the, the moons you know orbiting and live in real time and you know it was very 3d and cool um and so i think you know 
covered in cobwebs and maybe dusty, like I'm going to turn this back on and show, um, and show, you know, my great grandson, the, uh, the orbits and, um, mimicking what she showed me that I remember. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think it's not too difficult to, uh, not too difficult to find that. Um, uh, not too difficult at all. And th there's some cool stuff in chat. Um, if you like space nuns, check out, uh, sisters of the vast black by I'm about to find the name I'm clicking, uh, Lena rather. Um, it's just a really cool space nun book. Uh, and I read it just before we started playing this. So check that out. Um, and I'll put a link nice. because I'm a librarian. I was just gonna say, I was just gonna... <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not putting the world cat link. I'm putting the Goodreads link because I'm not, uh, we just did it the exact time. But uh, there you go. Uh, check it out at your local library. Uh, they, they should have it. And it's a cool novella. And I think there's a sequel coming out. It's just really excellent. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, part of me wants to have a role here, but I don't feel like there's a big conflict. I don't think that's a difficult, um, I don't know. I feel like going into this, but what do you think? Is there a... Um, I mean, I think that there there's, we could, we could call this grounds for reading a sitch to yeah. sort of try and prepare for, like to try and use this in a, uh, to our advantage, you know, use this to our advantage when, when, um, when we do actually try to lift it out. Um, and I'd be happy with that, but I'm also happy to, um, not have this necessarily trigger a move. I think the thing that's important to me is just to sort of like connect with this person in this time and try and feel meaningful, try and feel like I haven't, like I still can help. Yeah. Um, and that's more of a sense of like, I, I want to do something and I'm, I'm very afraid that like, I, I will be unable to, to contribute anymore at, the, at this point, you know, like when I was so far in the future, I was just like, okay, this is like not my world anymore. It's fine. But like, yeah. now I'm like, this is the future, but it's not so far that I don't still have hopes to help things. And so, yeah. Um, so, so this could be read a stitch. It also could be like charm or manipulate, not, not attempting to manipulate, but just attempting to like, you know, I, I guess I'm not trying to get him to do anything though, other than to, yeah. to, to be to, uh, the Alexi really wants to, to contribute in some way. Let's, let's read a sitch. Let's see what happens. Cool. 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 Uh, pull up my notepad character sheet, which I, if you forget to go and roll 20, I forget to go to this doc every single time. Nice. So one moment while I pull up this doc, um, no rush. Uh, yeah, and I think the you know the 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 cathedral uh, is is the same as it was. Um, you know, sa uh, the 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 saints are all you know mathematicians, and kind of in the stone around their statues in their little alcoves are the uh, are the mathematical equations that they contributed to to the world uh to uh to make things you know to make things better um and you know i picture it a lot like a lot of baroque catholic cathedrals uh mm -hmm. but very scientific lots of orbital imagery so lots of uh you know concentric circles and and that kind of orbital you know uh ovals intersecting in different cool ways Carved, carved into stone and uh, you know high vaulted ceilings um and and it was pretty it was pretty dark uh when we first got in there uh but now like everything you know it's clearly been shuttered like right? because we're in this kind of lost station that hasn't been seen in a while yeah yeah, uh, yeah i was i was just in in france and um and just every time i would turn around i was in paris and in strasbourg and every time i turn around there'd be this amazing 
gorgeous piece of architecture. This is just some built beautiful cathedral or beautiful uh, pal, you know, just everything was amazing. And, and what really blew me away is that you'd have this vast, huge building and then these tiny little details. I have all these pictures of like look yeah. at the carving that they did that like they, you know, you have this, this massive building and someone is, is, is doing things down to the, the smallest detail. And so that's what I'm envisioning is this huge thing, but like still all these orbits with each planet yep. and like yep. they're, they're, you know, the, 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 the composition of each planet has somehow been replicated in the, in the metal that's been used there and all this sort of uh, space harpsichord and organ music intensifies. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to roll a uh, Jack of all trades. Cause I don't have any skill for this. And the rule for Jack of all trades is I need to recall a memory from when I would have learned how to do this. And I'm, I think I already have, I'm basically saying, this is what sister Theana showed me. Um, and so I'm going to replicate the same thing that she showed me 200 years ago. Cool. Um, have you rolled? Is there, did I miss no. something? Okay. No, I'm rolling right now. I'm just, before I rolled, I wanted to justify why yeah, yeah. I'm doing Jack of all trades. Awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. I felt like I missed something and I was trying to look up um, the, my most meaningful cathedral experience is going to uh, uh, Gaudi's uh, cathedral in Barcelona. And I, I just remember walking into that building and being like, this was a building made to have a lightsaber fight in. Like this, someone... <laughs> Jedi need to be fighting here because this yeah, thing right. is this thing is not <laughs> this is a Star Wars building. I don't even know like this is not even Star Wars, but like you know old uh, the the old Flash Gordon comics. Like it just it just felt like something uh, from another yeah, world. The, uh, the really, stained really, glass yeah. for me was pretty over the top. I was like these giant stained glass windows all over the place, just incredibly yeah. intricate. Yeah. Um, yes. And the way they cast the light. Uh, so I got a 10 starting the cool. night off. Good. Cheat codes enabled. Cool. Um, good, good, good. So let me pull up, uh, what, how Rita Sitch works. Um, <laughs> that's the other thing we need. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, um, I, I've got a couple questions and I'm, I'm spec, I'm thinking about the, uh, specifically the, um, the vector, the, the path that we would need to take to safely make it out of here. So I want to say, what's my best way out of the gas giant? What's the best way for us to get the station out of, of the gas giant? Nice. If that's too vague. You know, I can certainly narrow it down, but that's going off the list. No, yeah, that that's great. Um, I think uh, the best way out is to uh, um, not just thrust out right away, but to sit tight for a little bit um, and analyze the orbit that you're in because mm -hmm. you're clearly in an orbit right now. Right, and 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 find the best point in that orbit um, because yeah, you, you're clearly already like, you know, you need to take a moment and, and not just try to thrust the hell out of here right away. Right. Yeah. So I asked him, I say, is your sister here? Did she travel with you? Uh, she did not. Uh, we thought it was best if, if one of us stayed in the outer orbits and made sure that our family's goals were kept to just in case something happened uh, in, in recorded, in our recorded, in the recorded orbits history, uh, a lost space station has never been brought back like this. That's wise. It's also wise never to leave your seat of power, uh, whatever that may be, um, these days, uh, Cause that's another thing I'm sure history told you is that the moment you, the moment you step, you step away, someone tries to steal the throne. Um, uh, cool. So I think, you know, uh, I, I like, we had all the, the, the SAS robots that were, 
rolling around without, a, you know, rolling around aiding earlier. And I think I call one of them in to like shoot a, like a laser through the pathway, or maybe the planetarium has the capacity within it to like draw, like take like a stylus and draw like a path and start sort of drawing a, uh, an orbit. Um, cool. And, and then the next question I want to ask is like kind of like, I'm going to like speed up the, the time frame. you know, like you can kind of like, I, I'm yeah. imagining all this thing moving and like, we can be like, okay, speed up, advance, like wait for the best time. And I also want to ask, what should I be on the lookout for? Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. The the thing you should be on the lookout for is the... Uh, is the alien station that is... Uh, that, you know, travels within 200,000 clicks or whatever of... Uh, of Ithaca station, you know, once a year and, uh, and, and just make sure that you don't run into it. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like a, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think when we see something that's moving through the orbit that like, doesn't look, that looks like it's got, uh, you know, power, like, like, yeah. it, like it's like, this isn't just an asteroid whipping around the orbit. This is, this is something that has control. I'm like, whoa, what is you know yeah and i and i think like you're you're talking to lito about you know political science and then uh yeah the, the hologram of this thing enters the room and and the scale is so off that it just like bathes the whole room in this bright green light right as it just like enters uh and and it it dwarves ithaca station which is a station the size of a city yeah. Uh, it, it dwarves Ithaca station. And, and I think it's also a good way to show scale for gas giants, which are just so much bigger than, than solid planet. than what we're used to. And, yeah. and, uh, when we think about planets and the fact that there could be a station, this big hidden inside the, 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 the planet's kind of ionosphere is some crazy ass shit. Yeah, and if I just yeah. used ionosphere wrong, I apologize to any astronomer who heard that and winced. Uh, you know, I'm going for it here. I, I yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I love it. No, I mean Saturn. I just looked it up. Saturn is 83 times bigger than Earth, um, yeah. and uh, I, I or has 83 times the mass. The, the, the uh, yeah, it's 83 times bigger. 764 times volume. Um, uh, I said, that's great. I just love the image that like, we're looking at all these little tiny asteroids and stuff. And, and then because we haven't zoomed out enough because we weren't prepared for it, just the entire holographic projection is overwhelmed by this green thing. It's like, what, did it break? Like what happened? And we realized, no, it's just presenting something so big. I have to like zoom out until we can finally even figure out what it is. Yep. Um, Yep. Uh, and I have one more question, but I, I feel like that's, that's like the moment of change right there. Like that's the sense of urgency is like, okay, that's what we really have to plan around. So, um, yeah, I, I think Alexi just turns and says, we, we, you know, we need to upload all of these navigational data to your systems and, and, and plan our trajectory. Yeah, um, and you know, and I think that there's some sort of, some sort of like uh, data download uh, on, from the from the from the planetarium to my you know a console in the void armor um, that doesn't doesn't include the ability to replicate all this, just includes the gravitation the uh, astrometric data, so that we can like put that into the ship's computers and 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 navigate around it. Um, yeah. And, and, but I don't know, there's also just like a moment of reverence of just like, how big is this Leviathan, right? We've never really known. And this notion yeah. that this thing could just be floating along inside it. And we never knew this was here. Yeah. Like, I think I, I keep zooming out for a while, like trying to figure out how big Leviathan is. And I just feel yeah. like I never get there. It's like, we just, yeah, keep, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like, yeah, there, there, it, it eventually the computer like gives you a toggle so you can just like really like just put one hand up and just turn it so that you can really zoom, zoom, zoom out. Um, yeah. and it's, it's, it's so powerful that like you zoom out until it's just like a little dot and then you like slowly zoom it back, back in and get back yeah. into, into where you were. Uh, because the, the, the scale is beyond really human comprehension. Uh, awesome. Um, yeah, I think the, he, you know, uh, he, he says, you know, he says, do you, do you have what you feel like we need? Uh, yeah. your grandson, King Lito. I say, um, yes, I think, um, uh, um, the, uh, yeah, I, I say, you know, Ithaca Station has weathered far more than anyone ever expected that, that, that it could, um, there's no way for me to know how accurate this, this data still is, but I have faith in Sister Theana's work and I would not believe myself. I, I, I wouldn't trust my own calculations here, but hers, hers are, um, uh, but hers I do. And, and, and let's, um, let's make use of those. I, I, I trust that they'll, that they'll guide us, guide us, or guide our, <laughs> guide us home. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, sounds great. Uh, yeah, I think you walk through this, uh, you know, dark, uh, not dark, but, um, abandoned, abandoned station city. Yeah. And uh, eventually... It's, it's really hard for me not to ask Lito about everything that's happened in the last 200 years. Right. Like, I know I shouldn't, but I'm just like, you right. know, just biting my tongue. Yeah. And I, I think eventually you get to, you know, the his his royal guard. And uh, I think their, their spacesuits are much more sleek and uh, much closer fit. Um, and I think he's still wearing kind of an old fashioned one, uh, to go mm. with the true sword. And I also think their, uh, their swords are, are, uh, a different make. I think that their swords look very much more like, um, you know, Renaissance rapiers. Right. And, uh, and, and, but you know, there it's the, it's kind of like these ornate, uh, basket hilts with you know batteries and uh and uh, and then uh you know no blade and then they you know they can click them on and and the the the, the blades come out laser sword style nice uh and uh yeah his kind of you know dashing uh king's guard uh take take spaces around him and and he he hands the data that you gave him, or he you know takes the data and, and flings it uh, onto the screen of his uh, of the bridge crew for the for the traveler. And I think people are are looking at you and trying to figure out who the hell you are. Right, right. Uh, so he he knew the stories, but it's not widely known. Yeah. yeah. And I look like I have an ancient, you know, several generation old version of the family crest. Right. Um, you know, right. It's, it's not, it's, I'm sure it's similar enough to look familiar, but yeah, I, I stay fairly quiet. I'm happy to let him, uh, obviously he's in charge, but I'm also happy not to try and interfere too much with the other goings ons. And I think a lot of it for me is just marveling at the traveler, like marveling at, how many generations it took to build this thing and to engineer it. And, um, and just the, 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 I, the principles behind how it was done. I'm just like touching the hull and kind of taking it in, which is not a very like awesome action RPG thing to do, but I, I feel like that's yeah. What Lexi would just sort of be awed by it. Um, yeah. Did, uh, did, did you have a, uh, a Rita Sitch question left? I do, I do. Um, and maybe let's take a look at this 
Oh, here's an interesting question to ask because I think I know the answer, but I might not. Who's in control here? Um, hmm. I mean, I've kind of been assuming it's, you know, my my great grandson, but now that he's a, amid his folks yeah. and whatnot, I, I wonder what that what that really what what that is going what's going on there. Yeah, so I think I, I've been thinking about this and space feudalism uh, as as in general, um, and I think uh, uh, Leto's space feudalism is is the type of you know space kingship that I want to see. Um, what you notice is that all of his honor guard are from different houses from different moons. Um, mm. And what you pick up is that he's definitely in charge, but from the way he acts, from the, the imagery in his uh, heraldry, you can tell that he took power with the mission to turn the orbits into a working democracy so that it could eventually become something else. And, and it's, it's um, a type of government that is designed to eat itself and become something else. Uh, and so like that is the throne that he sits on is is a throne meant to wipe away the baronies and the duchies uh yeah. turn it into something else so that it could eventually become the weird space anarchy that you'll see 10,000 years from now right 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 uh, it sounds like he is trying to issue in the third age that i right. don't know any real details about other than that it's clearly not the time of my um right yeah yeah, he, he 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 sits on a compostable throne. Yeah, um, well, well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's weird. In a lot of ways, all this time traveling has really robbed Alexei of many of his um, aspirations for power, and oh, they yeah. really transform them to much more in this huge galactic 10,000 year span, his priorities have shifted way more towards just like personal connections, like his family and, and the people he loves and keeps and holds dear way more than like binging King or Marquis or few feuds or whatnot. Like a lot of that stuff, just, it's just when you've seen 10,000 years in the future, like you just have to, how can you feel like any, nightly rank like today means anything. So, right. so this just, this, I don't know. I think this seems really cool to, awesome. to, to Alexei. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and, and, and I think like, as you're like walking around and like taking all this in, um, a, um, uh, a young woman comes up to you in, in a robe that you don't understand the meaning of. And she says, uh, King Leto suggested that you might want to come with me to the medical bay. Uh, I am a doctor who will have a cool name in a second. Cool name, doctor. Uh, allies. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it from there. Um, I'm I'm Doctor Eurycleia. Um, it doesn't look like they're like about to like take off right now, right? Like it's not it's not like they're charging the the engines and and ready to hit the go button. Correct? Not they're not ready. not quite yet. No. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, I I think I think Alexei is very eager to be at the helm um, when that happens. But but in the meantime, um, yeah. Uh, he, he follows Dr. Eurycleia. Uh, which of the travel systems are we using? Um, None-ish of them. We're, we're using... That's a great question, yeah. Traveler, burn, ap Traveler Apocalypse World Burned Over. It's mostly the Apocalypse World Burned Over moves with several custom Traveler-inspired moves. And we have a wee bit of the Traveler set. The character was made using the Traveler rules, but then nothing else really is. So it's a mashup yeah. of... 
Traveler character creation plus Apocalypse World Burn Over plus custom moves. Yeah. Um, this is. Um, yeah, there's always this part in uh, in in the Traveler book, and I, I've got it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I literally look it over before we, I, we start playing. Um, I've got the damn box set around here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Uh, I promise you it's within, oh, there it is. Uh, so, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's here. Uh, there's this point in the book where it always says, and sometimes, you know, the GM will have to make up, the, the referee will have to make up new things. Blah de, blah de, blah, and so whenever it says that, I think to myself, and for this skill in this world, we use uh, apocalypse world moves. So um, we're using apocalypse world moves, but it, it we're not we're really gutting apocalypse. Like everyone involved would be like, "What are you doing? Uh, why are you doing this to our our babies?" Um, so we're like taking the traveler stuff and we're using some of that and we're taking some of the apocalypse world stuff, but we're not using any of the, uh, apocalypse world, um, XP systems or, uh, really, really even the damage system. It's all very hand wavy. And, uh, I, I feel like in some ways very much in the, in the vibe of 1977 than yeah. uh, anything else. So anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, Alexi has psychic damage to his brain, which causes him seizures and has a burst capillaries in his eye. And he's also sort of battle worn. And we keep track of that by in a notepad file. Um, and 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 we we gain experience by spending time training and doing the things. So that's that's been our that's our that's our experience system. So far, I've advanced twice. Uh, uh, which has been felt like the right vibe. Like I advanced my leadership and I advanced my psychic skill uh, because we've had two sort of periods where, where that kind of training could happen. So um, yeah, it's a slow development, but also the characters are plenty comp where the character is plenty competent from the start that it doesn't need a, uh, it doesn't need, you know, really fast development. Yep. Yep. And there was also uh, the, the development that we're using is actually very much like the development that was in Classic Traveler, where it said, if you want to get better at your skill, tell the referee what you're planning to do to get better and uh, make a plan. And and so like there's a lot of stuff that's in Traveler that we're just reformatting uh, using kind of modern Apocalypse World stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, it's it's fun and it is working uh, oddly. Yeah. And every time it works, I don't know who's more surprised, me or Sean, but <laughs> we're we're pretty surprised. And uh, <laughs> we end up spending a fair amount of time uh, saying like, I can't believe this works. So anyway, thank you for your questions in chat. Uh, good, good is not nice. Uh, I appreciate that, and uh, and and enjoy talking about it. Honestly, I think it's a weird, cool thing that we've done here, and and. I enjoy sussing it out. Um, where, oh, with the medical bay. Uh, yeah, I think she um, asks you to stand in a, a, a circle and, uh, and, you know, th this line kind of goes over your 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 body as you're scanned, and she says, uh, "You took, um, you took the temporal uh, stabilizer that uh, King Leto gave you." Yes. Yeah. He. Um, yeah. He he nods and sort of. Um, peering around trying to figure out what she's doing but doesn't understand the science of this of this stuff yeah and says how are you feeling um to be honest very unsure how long i am going to be here i appreciate the stabilizer but i don't so far 
when I, the first time I accidentally traveled was my own, by my own actions, a mistake, but by my own actions. But the second time I did so, or the subsequent times have come on on their own volition. So I'm not sure whether or not I should trust any, uh, I, I don't know how confident we can be in any, in any, in any attempt to stabilize. Although, though I appreciate the effort. It must be very disorienting. What year is it? You don't have to give me a number, but yeah, yeah, yeah. She she gives you the year. Yeah. And says, uh, you are the most prolific and successful temporal traveler that has ever been recorded. Um, the, I, I can't imagine what you're feeling as a, as a temporal castaway, uh, it must be very disorienting and very difficult. Uh, my biggest concern is how I might deleteriously affect Is spillage as the as the temporal priest of my time described it as the, as the student, uh, and so I'm attempting to have as little effect as I can on this time. However, I I know I already have. <laughs> like I say that after I've just talked to Lido and shared all this information and all. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like it's it's real. It's really a struggle not to mess with what's what's going on. Um, and yeah. Um, your Claya says, uh, like, th there's a there's a, a a change in the hum of the engines, right? And and you can tell that something is about to happen, and uh, you know it's vibrating through the hull, and and you can feel it. And and Doctor Euryclea says, I'm trained in dealing with that kind of trauma. Uh, if you need to talk, I'm here. I would imagine you'll want to watch our ascent on the bridge, but I just wanted you to know uh, that kind of disorientation is very difficult. And we weren't, if we have not evolved to cope with it. Yeah. So you've been through things that our bodies were not meant to be through. Uh, we evolved to follow time in a very linear way. I'm I'm here to talk is what I'm saying. It's it's uh it's it's funny because I I I remember one of the very first things I did was I found a count cal found couches as a counselor for my you know my uh, abducted traumatized brother and. Uh, was very open oh, to- Oh shit, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Open to, you know, providing mental health support for my brother. Um, I wonder whether or not Alexi uh, is as good about receiving it as he is about, cause you know, people can be like, when it's someone else, oh, oh yeah, totally. absolutely. I want them to have good support, but when it's them, they can, their ego and their insecurities and their yeah. other failings can really get in the way of, of them um doing work they need to do and so i i think that might be happening here with alexi right now where he says um uh, thank you dr yoclay i very much appreciate it but i i fear anything i say right now I, I think i need to be watchful at least until we get out of orbit um this may be my own superstition, but I, I don't think the Leviathan thinks kindly of me tampering with timelines. And, and like, he knows it sounds silly to say the Leviathan might be sentient. Yeah. Um, but it, that's kind of easier for him to be like the weirdo than it is for him to like break down and tell her like, I just fucking don't know what the hell is going on. I don't even know who my family is. I don't know who I love. I don't know where I am in time. Like he can't quite have that breakdown. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not willing to let himself do it. So, um, so yeah. Instead, he defers and and 
and you know it says thanks but no thanks essentially or thanks but not now at least um and yeah and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna head to the assuming i'm excused like i'm gonna head to the bridge to see to see the flight cool um and i think i mean i don't think there's any role to really make uh um, I don't feel like this is a situation where I want to defer to the dice and and see if the ship breaks apart. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think. Yeah, I I think it's very reasonable for. I think it's if I was piloting the ship, if I was the one engineering all this stuff, I think it would make a lot of sense to act under fire of like, can you pull at the station? Can you move at the station without ripping it apart? Right. Can you avoid all the asteroids? Can you avoid the giant alien space station? Um, and I'm happy to make that role, but the irony is like, I don't think I have, like, I'm not at the helm. I'm not yeah. steering this shit. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There's, you know, there's, um, um, and, I, and, I, and I like that. Um, and I think uh, there is this tangible, amazing science fiction moment where this station being pushed by, you know, a squid ship and its engines um, emerges out of, you know, trailing, uh, you know, red and beige and white debris that it has gathered from all over the system, uh, over the millennia, uh, and, and it comes out of that, comes out of the, comes out of the Leviathan, uh, and, and into the orbit, uh, that, that sister Theano, um, who's now really Saint Theano at this point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and the ship kind of gets put back into its place. I think that's a cool place to take a break. We've been at this an hour and eleven. Yeah, uh, I'd like to refill my water, and then we'll kind of. Um, I think the next person we have to go see is the uh, the the Reverend Mother of the Engineering Nuns. Clearly, yeah, uh, absolutely. So who, have, who, have, who who has studied your temporal uh, movements uh, as, you know, that, that was her thesis. Uh, so uh, statement, <laughs> that was her thesis paper. So I'm curious uh, how that's going to go. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to see great granddaughter. Um, awesome. Thanks, friends, for hanging out with us. Uh, John and I are going to take a little break. We encourage you to do the same. Give yourself a little stretch. And uh, we'll be back in five.